All right, GoPro. How essential uh, is racing to GoPro, Nick? Oh, it's been hugely essential. Before racing, we were mainly a, a company building wrist cameras for surfers. And yeah. then in 2006, we were making enough, making enough money that I finally had the, the chance to go to racing school and could afford it. And so I came here to Sonoma Raceway and enrolled in the Russell Series. Right. And a three-day school did uh, well enough to give myself confidence to, to enter in the Championship Series won a scholarship to run in the championship series. Right. And in preparing for that, um, uh, on test days, they would want to rent us a camera for a hundred dollars, video camera to put on the race car. Okay. And I thought a hundred bucks, that's crazy. I've got my, my wrist camera in my car. I'll, I'll go get that and strap it to the roll bar instead. And right. um, when I strapped it to the roll bar, the light bulb went off and I realized that looks like it's supposed to be there. Yeah. And the footage that we got off of that wrist camera strapped to the roll bar uh, of that Formula Mazda was incredible. And it was way better than the cameras they were using on the cars. Okay. And uh, I thought, wow, GoPro needs to stop being a wrist camera company and start making mounts and accessories so that if a racing driver wants to mount it onto their race car yeah. or if a skier wants to mount it onto their chest skiing or what have you, any way that somebody... Uh, wants to use the camera they can because we make a mounting accessory for it yeah uh, but that's that was just the idea then the problem started which was r motorsport was killing our cameras because the cameras were built for surfing they mm -hmm. weren't built for the rigors of motorsport vibration uh, yeah. vibration 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 and so motorsport started killing all of our cameras, all of our customers' cameras, and it forced GoPro to completely re-engineer our camera okay. to survive a, a race yeah. environment. Yeah. And the, the end result is that our cameras are now built to essentially mil-spec to be able to survive intense vibration for hours at a time, okay. which is something we learned from racing. And as a, as a business, uh, it's, racing is a big part of our business. Yeah. Did you always envisage that they would be like an educational uh, tool as well? I mean, people use them now to basically, uh, you know, examine what they've been doing mm -hmm. uh, and how they've been doing it, and they can show them to, uh, you know, instructors and say, okay, what was I doing wrong in this camera uh, yeah. in this corner? And uh, I got cameras on the brain. Uh, yeah. You know, they actually uh, use them. Not, you know, instead of surfing, it's like, wow, look what I did with this wave or whatever, right. this is fun. It's actually being used, uh, you know, to for training. Learn, for training. You can mount them anywhere and see what suspension uh, movement you're getting in certain corners. Um, did you ever envisage that it could become this big? Yeah, well, that was the first uh, sort of use case that I thought it could be successful for because right. I, I, instead of renting this camera from the school, I was using my own camera and the footage was so much better and it helped me get so much quicker in a race car because I could use the camera every session, you know, I didn't yeah. have to pay for it any, anymore renting it. And I firsthand experienced how much better I got as a driver yeah. watching myself drive. And, yeah. and for testing, to watch your footage before you even get in the car, get your mind into that space so that if you watch yourself driving, say for 30 minutes before climbing into the car, uh, that first test session to your brain feels like your second test session because your brain's already in that mode. Right. So it's really helpful. Um, so from the beginning, I thought it'd be used for training. Um, what I'm most excited about now is that it's used for training at the top of the sport. Like yeah. we even see Formula One drivers using the camera regularly, Formula One teams. Right. Uh, everybody's using them at that level in karting, mm -hmm. on the radiator, on their helmet, what have you. And it's tough to, mm. to uh, flip through the pages of, of Racer these days and not every few pages see a GoPro being mounted on a professional race car. So yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's exciting to, to go from you know, Russell Racing School all yeah. the way up to the Formula One level with our cameras. Let's also talk about your racing. Uh, is, it, is it just a hobby? How far do you want to take it? Um, uh, how, uh, how much would you like to drive one of these? I'd be or scared to drive this. Will you be sticking to kind of like uh, open wheeler, uh, yeah, up to a certain level, or have you got bigger ambitions? You're a tall guy for a race car driver. I yeah, no, I just fit. I, th I think I can drive any formula car out there. Okay. Fit into it anyway. Hear that, um, Mr. Penske? Good. Right. Yeah, and uh, I got to drive a Daytona prototype, uh, the Spirit of Daytona, 
uh, car at uh, Test Track in Savannah, Georgia right, earlier okay. in the year, and that was I fit into that car all right, and okay. that was that was amazing. Yeah, um, it was scary at first. The idea of it, I was watching Ricky Taylor go down the front straight, and mm -hmm. I, I turned to my friend Rod and I said. <laughs> I don't know if I want to get, I shouldn't have watched him go down the front straight. Yeah. And then uh, I remember when I came into the pits after I'd been driving, I asked him, I said, did I look fast? Yeah. But I just couldn't believe how fast these things were going. Um, for me, it's just a hobby. Uh, yeah. I love it. I don't have the time between family and work mm -hmm. to, to properly dedicate myself to train. I mean, I've just, today was the first day of the Go Program Pre, today's qualifying for the Indy cars, and I raced in the Formula Car Challenge. and. I got third, and I didn't have anything for the guys, the two front guys, uh, just because I, at, the, at that level, you need to, to be in the car frequently and, and practice. I think if I had more free time, absolutely, I would be taking a, a bigger swing at it and do some professional races to see how that went, and maybe maybe later on. But but for now, it's I have so much respect for the guys that are doing it professionally and how much time they have to put into it. It's you just can't compete with them. I think it was a fair point that was made that if it hadn't had its aero, aero package upset by having six GoPros on it, then uh, yeah. you, you might have had something for the guys. Yeah, I, know. I didn't even know we had six GoPros <laughs> on the car today, so I think we're going to probably run two tomorrow and, and, right. and see. And, and, but, you know, we, we have a lot of data now from the video to go back and look and see maybe where we can improve. Yeah. Um, instead of just, you know, telling our engineer that the car is pushing through six, I can show. And, yeah, and you know, and uh, we can make some adjustments based on that. So I got a rematch tomorrow. Right. I'll let you guys know how it goes. And yeah, okay. Maybe awesome. have a fast lap to show you. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time. Mate. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, much yeah. appreciated, and good luck with the business. Yeah, it's awesome. Thank you. All right, cheers, right.